Greetings and welcome to the Golf Betting Show. It's Steve Bamford here from Golf Betting System. I take it that you are well. We are covering the 2022 AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Welcome to the show. Right, the Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. You can visit BeGambleAware.org for more information. And of course, please bet responsibly. Don't forget to visit Golf Betting System, the number one free golf betting resource yes golf betting system you know it free um, golf statistics free in-depth betting previews free strokes gained analysis um, we've got two predictor models this week all including strokes gained you can use all of this stuff completely free of charge there is no paywall don't as well forget the Golf Betting System podcast, which I've just recorded here. It's Tuesday morning over here in the United Kingdom. So, loads, it's a whole banquet suite of golf betting information for you for both the DP World Tour this week and, of course, the PGA Tour. So, welcome aboard. Right, all I ask from you guys, we, um, it was, let's, let's be frank, uh, it was a crap week last week in terms of views on the basis that the tournament started on Wednesday. So I'm looking for over a thousand views this week. That'd be fantastic. And can you guys hit 150 likes? That's what we need this week. 150 likes, over a thousand views. That'd be absolutely fabulous. If you can press the share button, that'd be awesome. And if you follow me on Twitter at Bamford Golf and you see me tweeting out the golf betting show please retweet and like that tweet as well it just adds momentum now also join me i need you to join me we are aiming for 2400 subscribers if we could get there this week add another 50 odd subscribers to get us to 2400 that would be absolutely fabulous and as ever of course let me know who you are backing in the comments section below i will put in the description box a link through to both my in-depth betting preview for the at&t bill beach bro am and the strokes gained analysis going back to 2017 all of the rounds around pebble beach in the at&t pebble beach pro am so you can just look sort by what skill set you're looking for who puts well on power who puts well on these greens who put who, who's got great ball striking around pebble beach it's all there for you free of charge at golf betting system right so like 150 likes subscribe let's get to 2400 subscribers if we can this week and also comment brilliant right let's crack on uh, let's talk through the beat, the uh, pro-am nature. We're back to three courses: 156 player, 156 amateur field, 156 teams. Unfortunately, unlike the American Express, the team nature of this goes right through to the last shot on Sunday. Right. Wasn't a pro-am last year, is a pro-am this year. Pebble Beach Golf Links will host two of the four rounds. As we know, it's a classical icon. It's a par 72. It plays to 7,051 yards in this AT&T Pebble format. The Greens are 3,500 square feet on average. Post-it stamp. Um, they feature Poana. No bent grass whatsoever. Um, you've then got Spyglass Hill. That is a par 72. That is, again, just over 7,000 yards. You've actually got some holes there with water hazards for. Again, Poe Anna Greens. Slightly bigger green surfaces, 5,000 square feet there. Spyglass Hill, to me, can be the most difficult of the three courses, especially if the wind doth blow. We then got the, another, the third course this year, which wasn't in play last year, the shore course, Monterey Peninsula Country Club. This is a 7,000 yard um, par 71. Um, this usually plays as the easiest of the courses of the three course rotor so the shore course is the one that's gettable um, it's a par 71 but i believe 
don't shoot me if I'm wrong, but I believe from memory that it features four par fives despite being a par 71. So it's there for the taking. Okay. So, Parana Greens, that's the key. Exactly what we saw last week at Torrey Pine. So, of course, you do see a lot of course form where players can play well at both Torrey Pines and play well here at Pebble Beach. Pebble Beach, though, is not what I would describe as a bomber's setup at all. Those three courses uh, being seventh out. I mean, this really is... Um, part of the short PGA Tour, if you see what I mean. The short course PGA Tour rotor, Pebble Beach, is there. I'm just looking at the weather as we speak. I want to give you the most up-to-date information that I can. We are looking at a warmest day of 16 degrees Celsius. So um, it's, it's going to be very northern European in the way that the the elements play not a lot of wind around up to nine miles an hour on Thursday six miles an hour on Friday 10 to 12 is the peak on Saturday and Sunday looks very very light I think the scoring is going to be mm, 17 18 under par for the winner the one thing I will say this course and this area hasn't had a lot of rain so I wouldn't be surprised if we get plenty of roll on the fairways and maybe they haven't phoned the Carmel. Um, they haven't phoned the Carmel by the sea um, fire appliances and watered the greens beyond uh, all realms of softness. So you might get some releasing greens as well. It is a program. I'm not talking U.S. Open here, but you might just get those green types where you've really got to work hard to get the ball close to the pin. That did happen here in 2018 when the winning score was 17 under Ted Potter Jr. But uh, he had a three-shot lead over 14 under par. So it can happen here. And just looking at the weather forecast, there it has been very little precipitation. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a tad firmer than we have or do see it here or have seen it here in the past. So that's your course agronomy and weather. Key player skills required for this particular test. I can only, of course, for strokes gained data on this, take you around the host course, which is Pebble Beach. Uh, they don't record strokes gained data for either uh, Spyglass or Monterey. So going Daniel Berger through Nick Taylor, Phil Mickelson, Ted Potter Jr., Jordan Spieth and Vaughan Taylor. Strokes gained tournament skill averages. So this is where they finished in the week that they won the title, and then we average it through those six renewals. Strokes gained off the tee, 32nd. It is not important. This is not a bomber's golf course. Strokes gained on approach, 9th. Strokes gained around the green, 24th. Tee to green, 9th. Strokes gained putting, 20th. So approach play would seem from those metrics to be the most important element of play. And of course, that makes sense because it's a short golf course and very small Greens, approach, play is key. I can then take you through the traditional skill set averages. And of course, these do include the two additional courses. And I'm going all the way back to Dustin Johnson in 2010. Driving distance, 35th. As I said, not important. That is why Pebble Beach is on the short course PGA Tour schedule. Driving accuracy, 29th. Greens in regulation, 6th. Proximity to hole 14th. Got to hit it close because these greens are so small. Scrambling 24th. Putting average 8th. So greens in regulation and strokes gain approach. That is where we are heading this week. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something slightly different this week. I'm going to read out to you the top 10 of this week's um, predictor model, the predictor model that I put in play for this week, okay? So, um, I did this Monday morning, yesterday morning, and it has to be said, William Hill are absolutely outstanding on price this week. So, if you haven't got a William Hill account and they are matching the top 10 in the market, so they're giving you guaranteed best odds on the top 10 in the market, plus 
they are also giving you eight places each way of 50 odds. So that, if you are a favourite backer, is an absolute no-brainer. So if you haven't got a William Hill betting account, we offer via Golf Betting System a bet £10 to get £30 of free bets proposition. Place a qualifying £10 or €10 Euro if you're in the Republic of Ireland first bet. You then receive two £15 or €15 Euro free bet tokens. When registering, use the promo code HOTEL30H30 when clicking through and registering from Golf Betting System. So William Hill, and they're going to be doing this a lot of the time in 2022. They did it towards the end of 2021 as well. Best price guaranteed on the top 10 on the PGA Tour and these extended eight places each way. It's a great shout. 50 odds paid. So, top 10 of the My Model. 10, Cameron Tringali. If I mention eight additional each way places, all the 50 odds. 30 to 1 with William Hill. 9 is Seamus Power. 30 to 1 with William Hill. All eight places. 8 is Jason Day. 20 to 1 with William Hill. 7 is Will Zalatoris. Who... <laughs> I've had two weeks now of runner-up finishes. Tom Hoagie at the Amex and the last week, Will Zalatoris lost in the playoff to Luca List of all people. He's an 18 to 1 chance this week. William Hill 8 places each way. He's not for me. 6 is Jordan Spieth, another one that's not for me. 20 to 1 with William Hill 8 places each way. 5 Top 5. Kevin Kisner is a 50 to 1 punt with William Hill. 4 is Matt Kuchar. He's 66 to 1 with Paddy Power right now, Tuesday morning. Best price in the UK and Ireland right now. 66 to 1 with Paddy Power, 8 places each way. 3, the favourite, Patrick Cantley, an 8 to 1 shot with Bet365. 2, Justin Rose, 28 to 1 with William Hill, 8 places each way. Number 1, Daniel Berger, the defending champion, 14 to 1 with William Hill, 8 places each way. He went off at 18 to 1 last year before Dustin Johnson withdrew. So Daniel Berger at 14s, Justin Rose at 28s, Patrick Cantley at 8 to 1. Now, what I'm going to do different, I'm going to reset the predictor model. And I'm just going to, because we just said strokes gained approach and GIR is absolutely critical. So let's look at strokes. You know, I'm using the predictor as I record this show. I've gone 10. Uh, on the strokes gained approach variable. So I'm maximizing strokes gained approach. I'm also maximizing greens in regulation. Let's see what that brings back for us on the predictor model. What names is it shouting? Well, it's going to shout different names because we're not mentioning anything about course form, about the fit to the course, to Poana greens, the fact it's on the coast, any of that. This is purely a look at who's got the best approach play. 10 Tied with Kyle, uh, we've got a tie for 10th. Ryan Armour and Kyle Stanley. Nine is Cam Percy, 400 to 1 Cam Percy. Eight is Patrick Cantlay, the favourite. Seven is Daniel Berger, the defending champion. Six is Lucas Glover. Five is Austin Eckroat. He's 275 to 1 with Bet365 right now. Four is Chad Ramey. Three is Russell Knox, who I had a very close look at. Two is Mita Perea. And number one, you probably won't be surprised, Will Zalatoris. Some other names just below that top 10 threshold. Uh, Nick Watney, Bo Hoag, Seamus Power, Christian Bzadenhout, Sung Yul No, Hayden Buckley, Ches Reevy, great record around here, Joseph Bramlett, Taylor Moore. Joel Damon. Right, I just thought, well, why not? Let's mix it up a bit. Let's mix it up. So that's the predictor model. That William Hill deal is absolutely fantastic. Bet 10, get 30 in free bets if you haven't got a William Hill account. Key terms and conditions available at Golf Betting System. Right, rolling eight weeks. I'm not going to say it. Let's have a look at our rolling eight-week information for you. Well, strokes gain approach would seem to be key, and I think I mentioned it last week. Strokes gain approach, in my, I've had a lot of players in the top 25 for approach that have gone on to win that particular week. So I'm going to take you through the top 12. As I said, click through the description box to the full preview for the full 25 rundown. So, 
12. Mackenzie Hughes and Min Woo Lee. Don't forget, we cover the DP World Tour in here. So Min Woo Lee, um, he's a good name to look out for. If you're uh, over in America and you don't know a lot about him, been doing some very good stuff over here on the DP World Tour and he's now in the world's top 50. Has a Masters invite. Tie for 10th, Matt Fitzpatrick and Ches Reeve. Nine is Justin Rose. Eight is Christian Bezadenhu. Don't forget this is over a short eight-week window. A tie for six, Lucas Glover and Vaughan Taylor. Five is Ben Crane, one appearance. Four is Ryan Palmer. Three is Daniel Berger. Two is Satoshi Kodaira. Number one is Will Zalatoris. So some similar names in there. Satoshi Kodaira at two. I know there's been some interest in Kodaira. Strokes gain T to green. He only had one appearance, and I believe he was top 12 at the Sony, wasn't he, in that eight-week period. Uh, T to green, same top 12. 12 is Mackenzie Hughes. 11, Patrick Cantlay. 10, Kevin Kisner. 9, Matt Fitzpatrick. 8, Cameron Tringali. 7, Vaughan Taylor. 6, Dean Bermesta. 5, Sadoshi Kadaira. 4, Daniel Berger. 3, Min Wu Lee. 2, Ryan Palmer. And 1, Will Zalatoris. That is the top 12 of strokes gained tee to green over the last 8 weeks on both tours combined. And finally... Strokes gained total. 12, DJ Trahan. We do get abnormalities, don't forget. I think he had a top 12 finish at Houston or somewhere. Uh, 11, Mackenzie Hughes. 9 is Kevin Kisner tied with Matt Kuchar. 8 is Maverick McNeely. 7, Denny McCarthy. 6, Will Zalatoris. 5, Ryan Palmer. 4, Min Wu Lee. 3, Satoshi Kodaira. Two, Daniel Berger. Number one, Matt Fitzpatrick. I keep saying, and it's now backfilling, this data will become more and more accurate now that we are filling with strokes gain data each and every week. So that's the rolling. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll throw putting in there for you as well. Top 12 putts. Because for me, you've got to be able to putt well to win at, at Pebble Beach. 12, a tie. Jonathan Bird and Brian Harmon. 10, Kevin Kisner and Cameron Percy tied. 9 is Justin Rose. 8 is Kevin Tway. He's interesting. I'll tell you another Kevin that's interesting this week. Kevin Chappell. A couple of top 10s around here. 7, DJ Trahan. There are signs of life with both Tway and Campbell. 6, Denny McCarthy. There's no surprise in that. No surprise, of course, um, with him being in the top putting statistics. Five is Daniel Berger. Four is Matt Kuchar. Three is Wyndham Clark. Another that I think is going to gain interest. Two, Mito Perea. And number one, Matt Fitzpatrick. Right. Historic odds of winners. It's famine or feast here, guys. It's famine or feast. What seems to happen is uh, you tend to get an elite with a lesser name. And some years the lesser name actually wins. Some years, the elite player wins. And if we look at last year, Daniel Berger was right up there and won the tournament. He beat 100 to 1 shot Maverick McNeely. And loads of us were on Nate Lashley, who was right up there as well, 200 to 1. But Berger won that particular year. Go to the year before that, 2020. Jason Day was in the picture at 25 to 1. Phil Mickelson was in the picture at 28 to 1. As was Daniel Berger at 40 to 1. But the top two spots were filled by Kevin Streelman at 100 to 1. And, and we had Nick Taylor at 160 to 1. That's what tends to happen here. Now, I desperately search for players. Desperately search for players in that 100 plus area. Pat Perez sprung to mind. Adam Svensson's another one. Um, there's some decent value out there at big prices. Trying to spot those players that could be the guys that get right up there with the elite. That does throw up Satoshi Kodaira, doesn't it? Satoshi Kodaira is so good in our statistics. He's a 200 to 1 chance right now. So those are the kind of players you might want to be sprinkling a little bit of each way cash on. And you never know, you might land lucky. But in terms of winning prices, Berger 18 to 1. That price was taken before DJ withdrew. I expect he went off close to 12s. Nick Taylor 160 to 1. Phil Mickelson 25 to 1. I was on board. Ted Potter Jr. 500 to 1. 
wacky way out there. Jordan Spieth was 9-1 to favourite, I believe, in 2017. Then Vaughn Taylor at 300s. Brant Schnedeker at 25 to 1s I was on. Johnny Walker in a very windswept affair, 28 to 1. Brant Schnedeker 14 to 1. If you go back to 2010, the overall average for winners since 2010 here is 101 to 1. The past eight renewals since the tournament became this false fall and then into the new year. Split 133 to 1. I have gone for the following players. These are my selections. Full details available, of course, in the betting preview available below the screen. Um, if you want the most winniest or winningest players on Poana and Bentgrass Poana Greens in this field since 2008, Jason Day's got four with Branch Snedeker, three, Jordan Spieth and Jimmy Walker. Two, Jason Day, Scott Pearce. And what am I talking about, Jason Day? He can't appear twice. Two is Scott Pearcey and Nick Watney. I will amend that on my published preview. And number one, uh, we've got loads at one. Even the likes of Aaron Badley, Kevin Tway, I mentioned Richie Wawrinski, Scott Stalins, Cameron Champ, Stuart Sink, Russell Knox. There's quite a few players in there that I think could go well. Andrew Putnam, another one. Daniel Berger, of course, won here last year. Patrick Cantley's also got a win on these Poana or Bent Poana mixed greens. Right, here is who's, these are what, who I'm going for. Right, I'm starting two points each way, 28 to 1 with William Hill, eight places each way of 50 odds, because I've got a William Hill account, and why wouldn't you? Best price and eight places each way. On Justin Rose, he impressed me last week at Torrey Pines, and the world number 39 is undoubtedly gaining momentum. 10th at the Wyndham, 6th at the BMW PGA Championship on the DP World Tour played here in the UK at Wentworth. 12th, 12th at the RSM Classic and last week 6th at the Farmers Insurance Open. Highlight an elite player who is using this spell of non-majors to rebuild a career that was definitely on a downturn. He's wanting to focus on the FedEx Cup. He's none of this DP World Tour or Saudi international action this week. He's not interested in that. He needs to get his world ranking up, and he wants to build a nice platform so that he can cruise through into the PGA Tour playoffs, something he didn't do last year. He's been struggling on the PGA Tour, as we know. Now, Pebble Form. Three career appearances at Pebble Beach. He finished sixth at the 2016 AT&T with his course rotor. Plus, third at the US Open in 2019. He putted positively on the Poana Greens both times and is naturally a Torrey Pines champion. He won the Farmers Insurance in 2019. He hasn't won since. He's got eight competitive rounds in this rotor as well because he's attended two A&T Pebble Beach pro -Am. So he knows the three courses well enough and he knows Pebble Beach intimately. Encouragingly for me, though, Rose's bread and butter in terms of his ball striking is returning. Second for ball striking at the RSM Classic, 18th at the American Express, and 14th last week at the Farmers in that particular category. He's also been in the top 14 for total accuracy. So that is greens hit and fairways hit. Fifth for strokes gained on approach last week at Torrey Pines. I am all over Justin Rose at 28 to 1. He's ninth for strokes gained putting, as we heard in my eight week tracker. Next up, another 28 to 1 chance with William Hill, eight places each way. Why wouldn't you open an account if you haven't got one? Best price and eight places each way on the top 10. Maverick McNeely. I can't justify... Well, I can justify the odds. The layers do not want to take money on Maverick McNeely because, I mean, it's crazy. Um, I looked over 2017 through to 2021, the best players, strokes going total, on Poana Greens in this field. Maverick McNeely ranks number one. Justin Rose ranks number 10. If I'm looking also for mid-score winning totals, something from 15 through to 18 under par. In this field, Justin Rose ranks as number four in this field for mid-score 
uh, totals. Maverick McNeely, number seven. So a lot of people will look at 28 to 1 on Maverick McNeely and go, oh, go up that, that price is terrible. But I'm all over him, all over him this week. Fifth in 2020, second in 2021. We know that he lives in the area. In fact, I think he actually lives on the property, potentially, this Pebble Beach property. He's got a 69.45 AT&T score, average score. That is only beaten by Daniel Berger, Jason Day and Jordan Spieth in this field. Not too shabby. And you just look at his results. It's a litany of short golf course, small greens. And also, if you just look at his career, five of McNeely's last seven top ten finishes have come in the Golden State, his home state of California including third at the 2019 Ellie Mae Classic on the Corn Ferry. So, we were on him at the Fortinet where he was a 50 to 1 chance and guess what? He finished runner up. So yeah, Maverick McNeely 28 to 1. I'm on him. Next up, a guy. You know I'm just looking at these 2017 through 2021 strokes gain total numbers. He ranks ninth on short courses. He also ranks in the top 15 for mid-score assignments in this field. He's got a litany of quality results across Wildlife Country Club, the Sony Open. Colonial Country Club. Uh, that's the Charles Swab now. He's won there. Old White TPC. Well, he used to play the Greenbrier. Sedgefield Country Club. The Wyndham. And even TPC Boston, which is a medium... Length golf course, but fescue inland faux links kind of setup. He's got a top 10 here. He sits currently third for strokes gained, uh, sorry, a third for strokes gained approach and eighth for tee to green. The putter let him down that particular week. That, uh, what, anyway, let me read this. Now, naturally, Poana is not his preferred putting surface, but... He has the required top 10 here at the AT&T Pro-Am. That at most champions gain. I think it's something like everyone that's won here recently has got at least a top 16 in this AT&T format around here. That particular year, he finished 10th and he was ranked 3rd for strokes gained on approach and 8th for tee to green. The putter let him down. And that is the key here. Can he make enough putts on Poana Greens? We know they're not his favourite. and I haven't mentioned his name yet. But... He's also got some decent finishes on Poana uh, greens that got bent grass mixed within them. I'm looking at third and eighth at the Detroit Country Club where they played the Rocket Mortgage. Fifth at TPC River Highlands last year, the Travellers. Sixth at Muirfield Village in 2017. Kevin Kisner. If this was a Bermuda grass web, uh, if this was a Bermuda grass assignment Kevin Kisner would be 22 to 1 this week he's he finished eighth at Kapalua he also finished third at Wildlife Country Club his last two um, starts he's ranking 10th in my tee to green at 10th in my putting and ninth in my strokes gained current form eight week trackers but because it's power we're being offered 50 to 1 I'm just on it it was too tempting one and a half points each way 50 to 1 on Betfair uh, sorry, on Paddy Power with Kevin Kisner. Next up, there is a 60 to 1 hanging on him right now with Bet Fred eight places each way. I would have loved that, but they were faffing about when I put this live on Monday, my preview. I took 50 to 1. Snap the 60s. Matt Jones, a AT&T Pebble Specialist. 10th, 15th, 7th, 11th and 5th from 14 appearances. The 41-year-old has grossed $1.06 million on this at this tournament, which is his third highest grossing event. You won't be surprised to hear the two that are above that are the two PJ Tour victories he's had. Houston Open and also last year's Honda Classic. I just think this is perfect for Jones. And don't forget, he shot that mad 32 under 260 total and did not win the Century Tournament of Champions in a loaded short field event. I would not be surprised if Matt Jones pops up. I've gone 50 to 1 with Paddy Power, 8 place each way, 1 point each way on Matt Jones. And then finally, 
We need guys that are accurate with their approach play, decent greens in regulation numbers, and can make enough putts on these Piranha greens. Also, I'm looking for players that have got some top 16, preferably top 10 finishes at the AT&T Pebble. I've just gone for Lucas Glover. The Glove. 66 to 1 with Paddy Power at a point each way on Lucas Glover. And just look what he did last season. He won the John Deere Classic, breaking an eight year non win streak. So he's got that out of the way. He's won the John Deere Classic. The other three top eight finishes he had on the PGA Tour last season were Maya Koba, and Matt can connect to this, Coastal Short Course, fifth. He also finished fourth at the Valero Texas Open. Well, we can't really link that run in. But also eighth at the Charles Schwab Challenge at Colonial. Jordan Spieth, a Colonial master. Daniel Berger's won at Colonial. Uh, Justin Rose has finished second and won at Colonial. You see where I'm heading. Glove's got that. Glove's got that. After a quiet start to his 2022 campaign at Kapalua, Lucas has played very well in January 5th on his first visit to two, the Sony Open since 2016. He shot a Thursday 6 under 66 at the American Express and was in semi contention throughout before a disappointing Sunday saw him finish 33rd. I think he was like 16th, 18th throughout. So he played nicely. First for greens in regulation, 8th for total accuracy, and 8th for ball striking at Wildlife Country Club when he was 5th. Lucas was also in the top 10, again, for greens in regulation and total accuracy at PGA West Stadium course. In effect, he's plotting short golf courses very nicely. Second for strokes gain, T to green highlights that just as nicely. Indeed, he, he ranks sixth for strokes gain on approach across my eight-week track. As if you were paying attention, you know that. A winner at the John Deere Classic. Again, that links in nicely with Jordan Speed, Daniel Berger. Um, Branch Snedeker has finished there, has finished runner up there in the past. So Plotters Prosper, 66 to 1. He's finished 11th here in 2016 and 7th here in 2019. I think he's in pretty rude health, Lucas Glover. So 11th and 7th across his last. Three visits to the AT&T. I think he doesn't putt too badly on these Poano greens either. So, Lucas Glover at 66s, Matt Jones at 50s, Kevin Kisner at 50s, and then Maverick McNeely plus Justin Rose at 28 to 1. If you're still with me now, thank you so much for your support. Please press the like button. Let's hit 150 likes. Let's get over 1,000 views on this video. If you see me tweeting the show, please retweet, share, do what you can. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Let's get on that road and deliver 2,400 subscribers before I see you again next week. It's been a blast. I'll be back next week for the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Always a highlight on the PGA Tour. Go well and have a good golf betting week.